And I leave here today believing more than ever that God is at work. As I close, let me just share a story. It was a few months ago I was reminded that even when it doesn't seem that way, God is still working. You see, I got a letter from a pastor who leads a small church just outside Jacksonville, Florida. He wrote to me of a time many years ago that he and his wife were attending Asbury Seminary in Wilbur, Kentucky. It's back in the 1970s. It was a place where they held in the spring of every year a Christian music festival where they would have music and then they would have preachers who would present the gospel and invite young people from all across the region. But he wrote to me that in 1977, he had decided at the seminary, they had collectively decided to end the Christian music festival. It was known as Ichthus. But he and his new bride felt a burden to take on the task. Even though he wrote, and I quote, that several friends told us that it would be very hard on our new marriage and we shouldn't do it. But he said, we answered the call. They gathered a few other seminarians, as he told me. And they worked a whole year long to arrange the event in the spring of 1978. And then he told me that the night came, the culminating evening on Saturday night, when everything was to come together and the main preaching was done. And he and his new bride were walking through the camp area and it was raining. And they were deeply disappointed. They thought it had all been for naught. And then he wrote these words in a letter. I quote, And that's because on that night, I didn't know that a future Vice President of the United States of America would be giving his life to Jesus Christ. He continued, I cannot write this without tears. And I still can't read it without tears. Because I remember that night sitting on a hillside. It was raining. And it was like I heard the words for the first time that God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whoever might believe in him might not perish but have eternal life. And that 19-year-old young man stood up and walked down that night not out of a sense of intellectual agreement, but because my heart was broken with gratitude for what had been done for me on the cross. I wrote a letter to that pastor, which I couldn't write without tears. Not long after that, we actually met him and his wife and laughed together and prayed together. But I told him, now I know who else to thank for that night so many years ago. It changed my life. You know, the lesson in that letter to me, though, was even when things don't seem like they're going the way we expect, they're going the way he expected. And the truth is, in the most challenging times in our nation, we can still claim a promise that we've had over the mantle of our home for now nearly 20 years. I traveled to the little house that we lived in while we served in the Congress. It traveled to the governor's residence in Indiana. And now it's over the mantle in the home of the vice presidency. It reads, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. I believe with all my heart that if we will hold fast to him, if we will hold fast to his promises, if we will hold up the example, the strength that comes through faith in Jesus Christ, that it will once again be people of faith that see our way through these challenging times, that a hope and a future awaits beyond anything we could ask or imagine. And the best days for Iowa and America, by God's grace, are yet to come. Thank you very much.
Thank you for the honor of being with you today.